Hi everyone, welcome to Today Was Wednesday on the Stoop in the World, Writing Motherhood Beyond the Domestic with Nancy Reddy. Nancy Reddy is the author of Pocket Universe, Double Jinx, a 2014 winner of the National Poetry Series, and Acadiana. She's also co-editor along with Emily Perez of The Long Devotion, Poets Writing Motherhood. Her essays have appeared in Poets and Writers, Electric Literature, Brevity, The Millions, and elsewhere. The recipient of a Walter E. Dakin Fellowship from the Sewanee Writers Conference and grants from the New Jersey State Council on the Arts and the Sustainable Arts Foundation, she teaches writing at Stockton University. Thank you so much for being here, Nancy, and please take it away. Yeah, thank you all so much for making time on your on your Wednesday afternoon in this slightly strange time. I really appreciate your being here. Um, so I wanted to be able to spend most of our time today really doing some writing and maybe sharing a little bit of that writing. Um, and I so in that spirit, I thought we would we would get started. Um, so the um, description um, is about um, the idea of being in the world. One of the things that um, Emily, my co-editor and I were really thinking about as we were working on this anthology, um, and I'll share some excerpts from that in a minute, um, were the kind of stereotypes of the motherhood poem, this kind of like, oh, isn't it sweet to be like at home with your baby and other things. And um, so one of the things that we really wanted to um, make sure was included in the book was actually the ways in which caregiving um, brings people into contact with all kinds of things in the world. And so we want today to think, you know, about mothering, if that's relevant to you, but also about caregiving in all kinds of other ways, right? And the ways that um, that act can, can bring us into um, contact with the natural world, can make us think about um, the political world differently, can make us think about community differently um, in lots of ways. So um, one of the things that I'm kind of obsessed with in my own writing is this question of um, like, what am I letting in and what am I not letting in? Um, like, what are the things that I've decided maybe aren't like an appropriate or like a uh, poetic subject? And so I thought we might start um, there. I'd ask you to um, make a list of things. I'm big on making lists as I get started with writing. Um, make a list of things that you've never included um, in a piece of writing. And those could be things that were like, um, felt too risky or too scary to put into um, a poem um, or another piece of writing, whatever kind of work you do. Um, I know that late in the process of uh, working on Pocket Universe, I made a list of words I hadn't used because like, how can you write a whole book about like birth and early motherhood and not say vagina at least once? Like it just has to be in there. Um, and there were a lot of things that I had not, had not included because they weren't like poetic enough. Um, but it might also just be things that, um, you've kind of screened out, like they're, they're not part of the writing world. Like I've lived in South Jersey for almost seven years now, I think, and I've never written a poem that has a Wawa in it, which seems crazy to me. That's like a fixture of, of my life. Um, so go ahead and make a list and I'll put these directions in the chat too, because I know it can be nice to see things um, written down. Go ahead and make a list of things um, that are part of your life that you feel like you've never included in a piece of writing. Wait, wait, wait. 
see. I'm going to put the directions in the in the chat again in case anybody um, if anybody needs them. So I'm making a list of um, anything that you feel like you've never included in a piece of your writing, either because it feels taboo or scary, or just because you don't think it feels like literary or poetic. What are the things that maybe you haven't thought to let into your writing? These might also be people. I usually like to try to make lists of like seven to 10 things because I feel like usually once I've gotten, once I've gotten that many, something in my brain has started to click. Like usually I'm, you know, two or three are kind of the obvious things. And if you keep going, you find something more, more surprising. Have folks been able to find a couple of things that feel feel interesting? Okay, so with whatever you've got with your list, hopefully there's a couple of things that that speak to you or that seem like they might be interesting. Um, let's spend a couple of minutes doing um, just some free writing from those things. You could approach it as um, crafting an image or developing a character or telling a story um, connected to your thing. So it could be like a scene of what happens at your local Wawa, if that's regionally resonant for you, um, or a uh, story of a particular time you went there or whatever else. Start with one of those um, ordinary kind of non-literary um, places or people um, and see where it takes you. We'll write for about five minutes and I'll have the opportunity to share if you wanna share. But feel free to ask questions in the chat um, if there's anything that's unclear that you want help us. Could you write that in the chat again? I've somehow missed what you're saying. 
Sure. So yeah, so what I'm sorry, I will um, say it now and I'll add it to the chat as well. So my suggestion is to pick one of those things or maybe a couple if they're connected to each other um, and do some free writing. Um, and if you want more specific directions in free writing, I suggested um, doing it as a scene, like helping us to see what's happening there. Um, you could think of it as a kind of character sketch. Um, if there are people involved and you wanna help us see them, or you could think about it as a story, a particular time that you um, you went somewhere. Does that answer your question, Jane? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. So get to a place where you can pause your writing and you'll be able to come back to it if you want to, if you find something that interests you.
Okay. So if folks are interested, um, I would love to do some uh, quick introductions now. I know the focus is on, um, you know, kind of your time to write, but it also can be nice to know who you're, who you're writing with um, and to feel this kind of, you know, sense of shared, um, shared intention across the digital space. Um, so uh, do folks want to um, say something to introduce themselves, maybe say something about what brought them here, maybe share a, a phrase from their writing? Is that okay? All right, um, I'm going to call on um, call on people because otherwise I know in Zoom you don't know um, who's next or who's up. Um, but um, John, I see you first, and then Lizzie. Um, so I would love to know, um, like I said, your name, um, something about what brought you here. If you're just a blue street regular, if there was something about this um, panel in particular that spoke to you, um, and then if you would share either what you were writing about or like a, a phrase of what you were thinking of. So like I said, John, you're up first. My name is Johanna. Um, I came to this workshop because many years ago I was Nancy's doula and I follow her on Twitter and I got very excited about this topic. Um, I am currently, I was recently graduated um, with my master's degree in nurse midwifery, but a long, long time ago, I loved to write poetry and um, the time spent indoors with my family in the pandemic made me really wanna get back in touch with writing again. So um, that's why I came today. And um, I ended up writing about the, taking out the compost, which led to climate change, which led to my mom. Hmm. And I love that way that like a brain can follow those, um, those things when you give a time to Lizzie. Hi, um, I've never done one of these things. I'm trying to take myself seriously as a writer. Um, I'm a therapist and I recently read, I've gotten into like sad mom fiction, which is so awesome and has made me feel so like seen. And I, has also inspired me to like write about just my experience of being a mom. And so, yeah, I just want to, I'm trying to like feed myself. So that's why I'm here. Oh, and I was writing about okay. diaper changes. And then it turned into just like when I first had a kid, my kid's three now, but when I first had him, I felt like I had to be like interesting to my friends and that like they were, yeah, but, and, but I didn't have anything else to talk about or I couldn't find other things to talk about. And I was just kind of writing about that experience. Um, and as Ashani just added in the chat, um, you are welcome to not be called on. Um, it's nice to, to be in conversation, but it's also totally fine to just be here um, writing writing yourself. Um, and I would say too, I love as a participant, the chat. Um, yeah, so feel free to use the chat. I love, um, I feel like the chat in Zoom can be a great way of participating um, and just chiming in on what other people are saying. Um, Gardenia, I see you next. Uh, I'm pretty, I feel like I'm the I'm in Los Angeles. Am I the only one that's on the West Coast? <laughs> no, I'm a native New Yorker, but I got I'm I'm stuck here for a little bit. So, <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. <laughs> um, and I too I feel like um, a lot of this uh, same both from Lizzie and Johanna. Um, I haven't written poetry since college, um, and when I saw this pop up, I thought it was like a great opportunity to just reconnect. Um, and uh, sort of use a different part of my brain that I hadn't in such a long time. Um, and uh, I guess sort of also just what Lizzie was saying, you know, uh, uh, you know, becoming a mom and just the different experiences I have had as a black mom. Um, you know, my daughter is a lighter shade than I am. And so I have sort of been experiencing my blackness in a different way. Um, with a lot of colorism and shadism. And so um, it's it's sort of been like, I've, I feel like I'm not only mothering my own child, but myself a little bit because it's sort of just a whole new re-education um, and just, you know, there are no rules. It's it's sort of mm -hmm. just sort of going through it. And um, so anyway, it's, it's been a journey and I've started to write about it. Um, because we're all talking about it more, I think, than we ever have yeah. about, you know, uh, it's not always sunshine and giggles. And um, so anyway, and so I, some of my prompts were, you know, I 
was thinking colorism, shadism, and then it sort of brought me to the farmer's market just because my daughter and I go there a lot, but it's a place where there is a mix, not only of people and shades, but even the food itself, just all the different colors. And um, so anyway, I just started sort of just writing stuff from there. Rebecca, I see you next. And then you're after um, Rebecca Marion. So go ahead, Rebecca, if you want. Yes, hi. Um, so I am Rebecca, I'm in Boston. Um, I actually follow, I get Nancy's newsletter. Um, so I, I, I don't know if that's how I found out about this or if it was just Twitter or something like that, but um, I'm a poet and have not intentionally not written about motherhood, but um, just I, I one time I tried, I felt like it was it was really difficult for me um, because it. Yeah, it was difficult. So this is why this this sounded very um, interesting um, to try to like push back, push past kind of that um, hesitancy and, and fear about writing um, about motherhood and um, from my list, I picked uh, grocery shopping because I never write about grocery shopping, but I have to do it all the time. Um, and about how it used to be like a very um, like almost a date like activity for my husband and I, um, and then how it changed during COVID to being like this dire, uh, stressful, horrible like type of experience. Um, and that's kind of where I got got to today. Thank you. I see you next, Marianne, yeah. Um, so I just wrote about the word motherhood because mm. I said motherhood, what's that about? A hood that is a cover where you can hide. That works. It's unavoidable. It's generational. Your mother, her mother, and however far it goes back, it's how far it goes forward. I'd like to believe it skipped me. Skip my mothering, fat chance. My plan, not that I had one, was to be the opposite of my mother. And then it goes on. So I was just dealing with motherhood. But the problem with being a mother, um, if your kids um, um, have issues, <laughs> it's a nice way of putting it, you know, it's... Um, you don't want to really write about that mm -hmm. because it's not fair, I don't think, yeah. to them. So although there is a wealth of material, it will never get written. Mm -hmm. So that's why I just skip to the big umbrella yeah. motherhood. And hopefully you'll all be lucky and have great kids. <laughs> saying about like being sensitive about like anytime we write someone else's stories like we're and even when we write our own stories we're touching on other people right um it's important to to think about that and to think about how we're um you know being ethical in our representations of others but I also think it's really important to not silence your own writing before you even start it right like I think there's a lot of value in at least getting it down and then thinking like maybe maybe this is not something I would want to share maybe I wouldn't want to try to publish it um, but I think there's a lot of value in at least trying to to clarify the thing for yourself through writing and so I hope that um it's a Joan know. Didian approach <laughs> you write yeah. so you understand it for yourself I don't want to do that yeah <laughs> but it's a way it's something to consider yeah <laughs> Jane, do you want to go next and then you, JC? Okay. okay. Um, my list went on for a, a while and I, I left it generic um, things I don't write about. Um, the early ones were really sensitive. <laughs> so I kept writing to get away from them. Um, <laughs> but, but one of them was a, a list of uh, grandparents I never met. And, and mm -hmm. looking at my grandfather was born in we just 1869 mm -hmm. the generations are really long in my family and I was really late in my father's life so the, the about the three grandparents I never met was one of the bullet points and the other one was about being resigned to some things mm -hmm. um last year 
I had many, many deaths in my family mm -hmm. and one, one being my mother who I didn't enjoy. And that resulted in pretty much a whole side of my family just being jettisoned. Um, so writing about the things that you can become resigned to mm -hmm. kind of where I started like that. And then more and more things just kind of started <laughs> rolling out. I got involved with this because I also, um, on your newsletter, and I really enjoy it quite a bit. And I, I write poetry a lot, but I'm always looking for somebody that takes the frenzy out of it. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like poetry month was like, how many things can you do? Yeah. <laughs> and your, your newsletter wasn't that way. And I really appreciated it. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, mm -hmm. I saved, saved a lot of it for May. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, and that's, yeah. So, um, and I can put the link in the chat. Last year in my newsletter, I did a poem a day prompt, mm -hmm. um, which at the time felt very energizing and exciting. And this year, as I was thinking about that, it just made me want to like lay down on the floor and cry. Um, and so I figured other people probably felt similarly. Um, so there was like a thing each day. And some days it was like, um, you know, you could write about this. And some days it was like, go look at a bird. So really much more aimed at like um, a kind of slow process and the idea of like being, being in the world. Um, is also important for writing. Um, I'll put the link in the chat in case other people are interested. I think it's like, for me, it's like being in the world as a poet and permission yes. not to feel this pr productivity craze. Oh um, my goodness. It's, yeah. Yeah. No, I really appreciate what you do. Thank you. Thank, thank you. My goodness. Um, JC, do you, would you introduce yourself? Um, I'm JC Todd. I live in Philadelphia. I write sometimes. Um, I have... Um, I, I try, for the most part, I don't write about living members of my family, mm -hmm. um, but I'm pretty much the oldest person in my family now. So um, I've been writing about my mother, but not her, about what she means to me. So I, th it's my image of her motherhood, I think. Mm -hmm. And I find that I'm avoiding writing about my own motherhood and my image of my motherhood so one of the things I put on the list um I put living members of my family but I'm not writing about that so I'm not writing about that but then I put murderous thoughts and actually <laughs> there there is a kind of um a rage that I have experienced as a mother not having this right now um, and I have found that when I wrote about it, I kind of tried to, oh, dampen it down or not make it so awful. You know, I, I, I really don't want to write myself as a bad mom, mm -hmm. or a, a rageful mom. Um, and I think now I, I would never have written that. I wouldn't have even had that thought without your prompt because it's sort of like off the off the table for me. So that's what I wrote. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you All right, Lisa, I see you next. Hi. Hi, I'm Lisa. I am in Lancaster. Um, <clears throat> I think I came across you after writing for Fuck Ups. Were you in that? And then, yeah, we talked oh, on yeah. Twitter about, um, I think that's where I like started following you. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. We uh, bonded over central Pennsylvania counties that have <laughs> dairy princesses. <laughs> um, so yeah, I uh, I work in tech. Um, I previously studied liberal arts and everything, but I, I work as a web developer um, and have done some web development contracting for Blue Stoop and Literary Philly. Yeah. Um, so I don't leave my house very much. So it's hard to come up with things that are like not domestic. Um, and then the thing that I thought about was parking lots because I do a lot of like grocery pickup and it's just easier. I hate grocery stores and um, it's nice to just order things online. Um, and I, before the pandemic was writing a lot about um, infertility and IVF. And so like sort of where my head was at with that plus parking lots was the like expectant mom's uh like parking spaces um and that kind of like dredged up a whole bunch of memories that I had kind of forgotten about mm. um so yeah that was really 
really helpful. <laughs> laughing in recognition at like how those like really ordinary places in our lives can like pull up all of these things that maybe you didn't know um, were in there. All right, and Melissa, I don't think we've heard from you yet, but you're welcome to stay quiet if you want. Oh no, I'll, I'll sorry. I'll turn my camera on. My dog. No, hey, you do whatever you want. <laughs> Straight now. Oh, well, your dog is beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, she's like begging for attention right now. Um, I. <laughs> I'm trying to work on poetry right now. I lost my mom two years ago. Um, and so I was pretty young. I was like 25. Yeah. So um, I am really interested in the idea of mother daughter relationships, but also um, I've been reading a lot of sad mom fiction as well. And I just think that there's this like whole conversation we miss as women or people who can have children, like about the idea of regret or mm. rape, like we said before, because we, I think are shamed on talking honestly about it and I don't have kids. So I'm kind of debating if I want them. Um, so yeah. Yeah. I would say, so thank you for that. I would also say if people have particular sad mom wrecks that they want to put in the chat, you should do that. I have like um, 15, but maybe I'll let you all um, chime in. <laughs> All right, and um, Darcy, I think you're the last person we haven't heard from if you, if you want to participate, but you're welcome to also just hang out. Oh, hi. Hi, I'm working. So <laughs> um, I found out because I've been coming to these blue student meetings um, when I can, um, but I just signed up for your newsletter. <laughs> and um, I, uh, I work in um, marketing. I do marketing writing for um, healthcare, pharma, and it's really dry. So I've always written my during my career, but um, I do poetry and other things to feed my creative juices. And um, I found your um, prompt really challenging. And I came up with, um, one of the things I came up with was my grandmother, um, my maternal grandmother, who was always very um, critical of me. And I find that my stepdaughter is going through the same thing with her, her mother's mm -hmm. mother. And so I started writing about that. Maybe it'll help her. <laughs> Those generational patterns are so powerful. Um, so I wanted to make a little bit of time now um, to do a little bit of reading. So I will let me make sure I have the right link, um, put a link in the chat um, for a selection of some of the poems from our um, anthology, Long Devotion. Um, this should take you, if I've done it correctly, tell me if this works, um, to a PDF inside a Google Drive folder. Did that work for folks? I can share it too, um, if you wanna look at it that way. Um, and so what I've done is select a couple of poems from um, this section of our book. There's a section of the book called In the World. Um, great, thank you for letting me know that, Lisa. Um, it always feels like a little miracle when things go the way that I intended them to, um, technologically. Um, so there's a section of the book um, that is in the world as the, um, as the title of this thing was, um, that has a selection of poems in it. And we are thinking about this way that um, mothering or caregiving, whatever it is that that means, kind of brings us into contact with the world. And so there's um, a couple of poems like Amy Nizuka Matadal's I Could Be a Whale Shark, um, January Gillow and Neal's poem, I think I have it here. Um, yeah, maybe the Milky Way um, is in here as well as really thinking about like the natural world and how we're like experiencing those spaces with our kids. Um, and then there's a couple of poems in here as well um, that speak a little more directly to um, kind of the political world and being aware, like being attuned to the um, current events and the political world differently um, because of our children. Um, there's, I wanted to, I wanted to select a kind of range of options, knowing that there's too much to really read and talk about right now, but I wanted people to be able to um, kind of choose their own, choose their own adventure, choose their own path, depending on what speaks to you. Um, so I'll give you a minute to um, peruse, maybe just looking at kind of like titles, getting a sense of what they are, maybe what it is that you um, need or are up for in this, um, in this moment. Um, and then maybe we can um, read and talk about one or two of these in particular. So just scan and see what see what speaks to you.
So I don't think you've had time to probably like really read in detail, but I'm curious um, what's speaking to you, if we can coalesce around maybe one or two poems that seem especially present. You're welcome to unmute yourself um, or just or chime in in the chat. Nodding in my favorite jersey. I think that's such a good poem. And It seems like folks are reading and thinking, which is great. So I'll give you another couple of minutes and then maybe we can talk about um, ways that these poems could suggest directions for, um, for writing. Wow. Sasha West. Recognition. So I'm curious, um, either what, um, like what resonates with you, just if they were moments or lines or images um, that really struck you in any of these poems, um, or if there's anything here that suggests um, like avenues for your own writing, if that makes sense. I would we just start, I was just gonna say that um, I wrote in the comments that one, one way is about to write politically and about motherhood in the same way. Um, I really like those Erica and Emmy poems for that reason, but more for me as an in
you point out with your offspring or um, the, th the threats that we all face. Um, so the, that that seemed and that seemed something that I could I could see myself engaging in or using as a path forward. Mm -hmm. In the first poem, I really liked the imagery of like her being kind of like stuck in a body or like mm -hmm. stuck in connection while her husband's like out in the ocean, like that kind of, I've just been thinking about how angry it makes me when people are like, enjoy it, it goes so fast. Like, especially when I had a young baby, when there's just so many things wrong with it, but like just this idea of like closeness can be, uh, you know, like connecting and feel really good and then also feel suffocating. And then also like, even though you're so connected to someone it separates you from other people mm -hmm. and that there's like nothing, you know, if, if you do like carry a baby to term then like, that's just a thing happening. <laughs> like It's like such a fact that's hard to escape or something. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll say the the in defense of uh, poem for me it, it it made me pause and think and Rebecca I think you just used the word threat um, just sort of you know I guess as I pause and think as my you know as my daughter is getting older as well I think as a mother I think what happens at least it, and this you know being a black mother to a black daughter and just the experiences I've now had with racism, with her being there, um, there is something I guess that shifts a little bit where I feel she is is like going to be threatened by society, by the world, right, by society. And it's just in you know my we have this conversation with my white friends and my black friends. You know, it does seem like parallel worlds sometimes, just because I do feel like sometimes you know, we're under threat in a way that maybe my white mom friends and their daughters would never experience. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it's, it, it's, it's, it's really, it just gives me pause, you know, because it, it affects how I see the world. And then there is this sort of like mama bear thing that happens because as much as I want to protect her, I can't. And then I shouldn't, right? Because she has, this is her, she must through, move through the world and defend herself and, and find her voice. Um, so it's, it's such a mixed bag, you know? And I'll add, I'm not sure, I don't think it's apparent in the poem itself. And one of the January Gill O'Neill poem, maybe the Milky Way, she's the black mother of black children. And so for me, that's one of the things I'm always thinking about reading that poem is like the, the sense of like protecting her son. And um, it's very present in other, in other poems of hers, or maybe it's more explicit. Um, but that for me, that sense of like tenderness and threat is something that's always kind of present for me when I read that poem. One thing that I'll point out, just in a, and JC, I could hear you reading Sasha West poem. One thing that I'll point out just as a craft issue in that poem, which is, which is longer, um, is also these like very long sentences. And I think the way that that can be a way of letting things in too, um, you know, can be useful in free writing, but also useful in other things. She has these very long sentences that kind of ramble and like keep going and keep going towards the middle of the first page. Um, there's this, um, we had private traumas, deaths, abuse, assault, and grief. Da, da, da. We had two cars, a fridge, a washing machine. We're told we were what the whole world wanted. Have you tried the cold brew coffee, the activated charcoal cocktail? Like, I love those sentences that just kind of keep going and like keeping more in and expanding. And I think that's something to um, think about in your own writing as well as a kind of craft technique. And I'd add that, I mean, I I'm fascinated by exactly what you were talking about, Nancy. And then I see, like in the last, I don't know, third or quarter of the poem, um, you, you understand that all of this 
is held in her body mm. is also holding her child. Um, and, and then those long rambly sentences, though they continue, they start to really drive in. And I, I, I was just astonished by that. I want to write a poem like this. <laughs> like, um, well, so who were the Greek kings? I mean, how can you do this at the end of a poem that is so much about the everyday dreck and, and, how, um, and how overpowering and interruptive it can be in a sort of human to human relationship? Who were the Greek kings who put their daughters out to be sacrificed? I had brought her out of my body, had her umbilical cord cut to bind her to the rock, the mast, the world. Oh my God. And that's one of the things that I think um, that I love about that poem that I love in poems generally is this insistence on like letting more in and letting more in and kind of and kind of going bigger. Um, and I think can be um, I don't know, just really freeing and really helpful for your own writing practice. Um, especially if you are, as I think everyone in this group is, like in a place in your life where you're doing a lot of things and you're maybe not. Um, I don't know, like a poet living in a tower uninterrupted by the world with hours to gaze at daisies every day, you know, right? Like we all live lives that are like filled with dreck as JC was saying, um, and maybe occasional moments of, um, you know, transcendence. And I think it's, it can be helpful to see examples of poems that are enacting that in a way or admitting those things um, that our own writing can do that too um, and can just keep kind of letting things in. So let's move on our last little bit of time. And again, I'll put the instructions in the chat as well um, uh, to think about either. So if you have something in your brain right now, if you're like, I want to write a poem like that, and like JC, and you're kind of feeling like you're ready to go do that, obviously, for 10 minutes, like, please don't let my directions deter you. Um, my prompt, though, um, is to um, think about something you've learned through your caregiving. And this could be like, my kids have each gone through a phase of like being super obsessed with space. And so I feel like I've learned a lot about space. Um, now they're obsessed with like Pokemon and Minecraft and I've managed to mostly like not that let, let that into my brain, but you know, some of it gets in. Um, so something you've learned through your kids, it could be an actual like thing that they've gotten obsessed with or through your caregiving and other capacities, right? Um, if you are um, caring for animals, other people in your lives, et cetera. Um, or it could be something you've learned about like moving through the world, doing that kind of caregiving work. I think a lot about like um, walking with my kids and they're smaller than I am and they're slower and they notice things differently than I do. And it's really like attuned me um, to the world world in a really different way. So think about something that you have learned through caregiving in some capacity and try to give us a lens into that. You might also just start with a list. I love lists. You could also, if that feels abstract to you right now, you could also just start with a list of um, ways that caregiving has kind of shaped what you see, what you notice, um, what you experience, even places you go, right? Like I'm in a lot of places because I have kids that I wouldn't have been otherwise. Let's spend maybe like five minutes writing and then we'll have a quick chance to say goodbye at the end.
We are very nearly at time. Um, I would love it if you want. Um, if you would put a phrase or an image or an idea, if there's something from your writing that you want to share, if you would throw that in the chat, you are welcome to um, share that way. Um, I would just say in like kind of maybe two notes of closing. Um, one is that if you like me now have like lists of crazy things in your notebook and you're kind of like, what now? Um, Actually, I think that's a great starting point. Right? Like it is proof that there are things in your brain um, that you can write. Um, if you're interested, the the last um, entry in my newsletter, like the one that'll come up when you go there, is a whole list of. Um, oh, um, I love that chain. Oh my goodness. Okay, I need to I'm gonna read all of these in a minute. Um, but the most recent entry in the newsletter is a list of a whole bunch of revision strategies. Kind of like, okay, so if you have like a whole list of things in your notebook, kind of like, what do you what do you do next? So there are some um, ways forward in there. Um, and the other thing, oh, I love these. Um, and then the other things that I the other thing that I would say um, is um, that if you're if you I don't know if you like these kinds of exercises. I hope that you will um, take a look at our book. It's very much geared towards this idea that like um, writing can be a way of thinking about and making sense of um, of mothering um, and really like across across a lifespan and across a lot of different experiences. And these lines are amazing, guys. Oh my goodness. Okay, um, the very first page in the um, handout has a couple of other events um, coming up that are connected to my book. There's so many good blue scoop um, things coming up. Um, and I hope that you will take away that like you can do a lot of reading and writing and thinking um, in like five minutes. If you have five minutes to free write, if you have an hour to um, put into this. And oh my God, look at these lines. Okay. I'm going to pause there so that I can like read these and think about how amazing they are. Um, Ashani, if you want to say anything um, in closing, it has been such a joy to get to write with you all and hear you all um, and some people that I know on the internet or in life um, and some people that I don't. And I'm happy that you um, spent this hour um, with us taking our writing seriously, as I think Libby said. Yes, um, all I really want to say is a big thank you to Nancy and to all of our participants today. Um, fantastic session. It's been so great to hear from you, to see these beautiful lines coming in the chat. Um, as always, please check out our future Wednesdays on the Stoops, our classes, and I will hopefully see you next week. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>